called me to put it higher. You called me to put it higher. Thank you very much uh, to allow me to present this data. And I would like to first thank uh, Ofer Rotem and Edith Peretz that did most of the work. And this uh, data was presented in a poster in ESMO uh, last week. Those are my disclosures. And basically, uh, the, the question is whether we have to treat patients with a recurrence score of 26 to, to 30. And actually, there is not real data. We presented our data, uh, I think, uh, a few years ago, uh, including this group. And uh, just to mention what uh, Moshe Imbar asked, uh, our data was exactly the data of Taylor X presented and published about three years before Taylor X. So probably an order people to, to get this message, the majority of women will have to wait another 10 years because those studies will be read in 10 years. And they will show what we think is the, the right answer. So basically, this is a, a data set of the Clarit data set, and we are speaking about the 26 to 30 and the exclusion criteria were HER2 positive, metastatic disease, um, diagnosis of breast cancer in the five years preceding the test, and having two recurrent scores um, results with one over 30. Uh, and the data source is the CLALIT and the, the, the ONCOTEST uh, data, statistic or regular statistic, nothing sophisticated. So basically, we have 550 patients and dropped about 18 patients, which is actually almost nothing. We didn't have data uh, for 11 patients about uh, uh, treatment and recurrence data. So basically, all the data set is quite complete, and there is no bias on selecting patients on this data set. So we have approximately 400 patients with N0 disease, and about 140 with N1 MIC, N1, and N. Uh, one lymph node, two lymph nodes, and three lymph nodes. Basically, um, you can see the, the, pa patient, the patient based on characteristic of all the patients, and uh, the age is quite similar. Uh, two more size in the uh, N positive was a little bit uh, larger, and the grade white was quite similar, histological quite similar. And we have a deta detailed data about uh, one, two, three lymph nodes, but the groups are very small, very small, so we are not going to show any difference on either one, two, three, and N1 MIC. The data will be for the four groups together. And this is the recurrence score distribution in the N0 and N1, quite similar, there is no significance. So we have patients on the 25, on the 26, sorry, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Majority are on the 26, 7. And basically what people did, and in Israel, uh, the, the medium follow-up, it's over, seven, it's almost eight years. So the data is quite mature. And uh, we can see that we are quite uh, smart. Uh, we don't believe that biologic uh, uh, data, uh, it's a number. We don't understand the 25 versus 26. I don't think the cancer cells, actually, there is a number inside. And, uh, and we see that the, the higher the recurrence score on N0, the more chemotherapy has been given. On the N+, plus, basically, about 60% of the patients got chemotherapy. So what we have quite an even number of patients who got and didn't get any chemotherapy. And uh, the baseline characteristic by chemotherapy used on N0 patients, there is uh, statistical significance on age, on tumor size, and um, basically those are the, the main factors that influenced on giving yes or no chemotherapy. On the N1 MIC, and N positive, again, age, size, were statistically dif uh, different. And uh, nodal status distribution by chemotherapy use, you can see in N1 MIC, N1 lymph node, two lymph nodes, and three lymph nodes, basically uh, quite similar the numbers, and there is no statistical difference. 
Uh, odds ratio for receiving chemotherapy by nodal status. We can say on the N0 group, age, influence, tumor size, and recurrence score. On the N1 meek and positive, age was the most uh, influential factor to yes or no to give chemotherapy. And those are the, the results. Basically, the same that we show in the past, N0. There are superimposed lines in disease-free overall survival, breast cancer sick survival, and those are the numbers. It's a retrospective, real-life data, but uh, quite mature data. My prediction will be that uh, the data from prospective studies actually will be exactly the same, because I think the database of the CLALIT it's quite robust, and since we have shown this also uh, for the TIL-25, I don't assume it will be really a difference on the above 25. Uh, and this data, it's matured. It's more than seven, almost eight years follow-up, a medium follow-up. You can see the numbers uh, at risk on the bottom part of each uh, slide. And this is for the N1 MIC and N123 lymph nodes. Basically, um, the numbers are small. There is some statistical difference on the best breast cancer specific survival in the, in the bottom here. But I think for the N1 MIC and N123 lymph nodes, uh, we have to be more careful because the numbers are smaller. Um, and we may assume that the, the, the benefit of chemotherapy could be higher. Or let's say in the opposite way, the risk of not giving chemotherapy could be larger. But I'm not so sure. This is, those are the numbers. So we have to conclude. Uh, N0 patient recurrence score 26 to 30, low risk according to clinical pathological characteristic, very likely to forego adjuvant chemotherapy and their clinical outcomes, both overall survival, distant relapsed survival, and breast cancer specific mortality were excellent. It doesn't matter if you give chemotherapy or you don't give chemotherapy. So basically, on my uh, way of practicing medicine, uh, actually, it's quite uh, a mistake to give chemotherapy to those patients. On the N1 MIC, N123, you have to be more careful. I am not so sure what the answer will be because of our sample, it's too small. And uh, I, I think that um, uh, um, waiting another 10 years for the prospective randomized trial for uh, N0, 26 to 30, I'm not so sure is so ethical. But that's my personal bias. And I would thank uh, all the collaborators and again, uh, this uh, presentation could not be done without the help of Abital. And thank you, Abital. She actually will say something else. She actually worked very hard for my group in the last year for a lot of presentation that we have done in the last year. And thank you, Abital. And uh, questions? I will leave this one because I think that's the most important. <laughs> Any question? Salo, where to go the line now? You know, I, 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 I don't think the biology is a line. No. When should we give a patient the chemotherapy? Or when, when should we? Do? You have the answer no. here. No answer. No, here's the answer. Okay. You can read it by yourself. Ken. Salo, again, thanks. Four years ago, five years ago, when you first presented this fantastic work, I think we were something in, somewhere in Ramat Aviv, and you asked who is going to change the practice and will not give chemotherapy for 26 to 30, you and me, <laughs> I think we are the only in the room that said no. Now, none, of, you, okay. none of us mentioned two studies. One, this American woman, woman who is doing lung and breast, I forgot her name just at this very moment, who showed us that calf uh, tamoxifen and calf plus tamoxifen were the same for more than three nodes, and she is not 
giving chemotherapy up to six nodes, and I've spoken to her. She is not giving chemotherapy even in nine nodes. There is a Danish study presented, I think, in the Lancet about ProSigna. Four to nine lymph nodes, no difference in giving chemotherapy with ER positive against tamoxifen. So I think we are over treating so many patients with such a low gain, and I think we should reconsider. Okay, I will, I will, first of all, I will ask the crowd who is going to give chemotherapy for 26 to 30? <laughs> and zero. <laughs> now it's only one. <laughs> Nobody. So people are going to give chemotherapy or not give chemotherapy? Are you going to chemotherapy or not? Did Okay. It's not this answer. Okay. Uh, about what you are saying, I think that the number of lymph nodes is quite irrelevant. Uh, it's the biological what works, and since it hasn't been tested, I think the threshold of three lymph nodes for oncotype is a problem, and it should be also tested in higher number of lymph nodes, and I think the data should be really done, because we, uh, whoever has more uh, gray hairs, has treated a lot of patients with more lymph nodes, and you know that the biological of the disease, it's very, very benign. So probably it could be the, the, num the, the, the threshold, not uh, 25 or 35, doesn't matter, it could be 13, a lack number. It doesn't matter, but I think this has to be tested. Uh, one question about pre versus postmenopausal women. Did you look at the... We don't have a, enough, the, the samples are too small. And also um, compliance with adjuvant endocrine therapy. We don't have the data. It's, we don't have the, the we don't have the data. So, are you giving adjuvant chemotherapy for ILC with any number of nodes? I know it's beyond the, sc <laughs> the scope, but uh, yeah. I must Basically. confess, hmm? I've stopped giving chemotherapy no. adjuvant for ILC. It doesn't work, doesn't do anything, and I think I'm in exception. Uh, I hope not. Uh, I think that you are not completely exception, but I think this that I will say what Professor Rushalmi said based upon clinical characteristics of patients. I give less, the, the more the years I give less chemotherapy for breast cancer. When we say based on clinical pathological features, someone here in the room use RS Clean for the 26 and 30? How many? Ah, you need, you need to have an Excel with all your passwords. <laughs> who had a recurrent score of 28 uh, and zero. Uh, she had a 17% chance of distant recurrence according to the oncotype. I put her on RS clean. She had a tiny tumor, eight millimeters, grade two. She was 50 something. And with RS clean, it came down to 8% from 17%. But the benefit was still there. From his chemo, it went down to 4%. So the 50% relative risk reduction was still there, so it's very hard. It's a, it's a very hard decision what to do. She was seen by another colleague and said, "You will decide." She can't decide. If I can't decide, how can she decide? She has to get a recommendation, and then decide if she takes the recommendation. That's a difference from deciding should she do chemo or not. I told I told her that uh, I, according to data, I cannot. Uh, in all good measure, tell them not to take it, but to understand the clinical uh, benefit, which is small, but it's still there. If she is in those four percent, if we believe the R is clean, it's a hundred percent for her for metastatic disease. So I use it basically to give better prognostic, but and help sometimes in decision. Uh, just about the RS clean, the validation data of the RS clean, it's our data from the CLI database. So. Uh, so, so I think the data, it's very accurate because actually it was exactly what uh, 
the Taylor X data showed in order to prepare the uh, RS clean. But this was 28, and still there was benefit. Okay. So according to your data, there's no benefit. So, yeah. No, you know, life is not so easy. Uh, it's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.